So I'm not used to using uh, one of these. I like to call these a leash. Um, so I'm Pastor Sheldon. Thank you so much for that welcome, and thank you, uh, Jeff, for the introduction. Um, man, what a blessing. What a blessing it is to be here with you this morning. And I just say, want to say God morning and welcome home, family. Family of choice. And I say family of choice because we choose to be here today, because we could have chose to be a lot of other places. And instead, we chose to come together in the body with brothers and sisters. And so welcome, welcome home. I'm so grateful to have you here today, All, uh, because it's good for us to come together. But otherwise, I would just be standing here talking to myself as well. So I'm so glad you are here. Um, so, um, if you want, you can turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. I'll catch up to you there in a short bit. Um, I just want to say uh, just what a blessing it is. Pastor Jeff contacted me about a month or so ago. We talked about it, glancingly talked about it about a year ago, about doing a, a church swap thing, a pulpit swap thing. And, and um, we never really went anywhere with it. But about a month ago, he hit me up and he said, hey, what do you think about? And I said, dude, let's do this thing. Let's do it. And so I was so grateful um, that he would even consider entrusting you to me today. And I'm entrusting my congregation to Jeff today. And, and you, know, um, you know Pastor Jeff, and, and you know God uh, uh, is using him in an amazing ways. What a, what a man of God that he is. And I, you, you are so blessed to have him as a pastor. And, and after today, you'll realize how blessed you really are. Um, and so, but... Uh, um, what we like to do at Celebrate Sioux Falls is, is we like to do prayers and praises at the beginning. Um, and what that is, is we take the time to ask, do you have a prayer request? Maybe you just got the results back and you have cancer, right? Or maybe there's a praise where you just found out you're going to have another little one or a grandchild. Whatever that is, um, we like to offer the opportunity for our congregation to ask for communal prayer for that, and then people can pray about it throughout the course of the week. Um, and so if anyone has anything, I would love to take that down. I'll jot it down. I'll pray about it later, but I'll pray about it with you all as a group today. And I know it's new and it's weird, right? Because they don't do that in church. And uh, uh, the problem with that is, is that we're the church and we should be doing that. Um, and so for me, that's where my, my conviction's at. That's why we do it uh, up at Celebrate Canton. So does anyone have uh, anything they would like me to pray about when we open up in prayer? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so everyone else is privileged to know your name, and I forgot your name because I think you told me. Sharon? Okay, I think I was told earlier, but I forgot. So would anyone else like? Yes. Safe travels. Safe travels? Excellent. Absolutely. And, and so can I forgot your name too. Brandy? No. Yeah, it is. Ah, I got it right. Yes. <laughs> Honey, I was right. <laughs> so just that one time. I I keep trying to get her to write it down for me. She won't do it. So, you know, I just, yes. We have a baby that will be due in our family in just a couple of days. So we just would like to pray that mom uh, has new pregnancies and birth and a baby child. Certainly. And, and what's mom's name? Mom's name is Alyssa. Alyssa? Perfect. Yes. Your health? Okay. Absolutely. All right, please join me as we go before the Lord. Father God, I thank you so much. I thank you for what you do. Lord, man, each and every day you, you gave me breath and you gave me a pulse. And that means we have this day that's just loaded, loaded with opportunity, Lord. 
and just thank you so much. Thank you for uh, impressing upon Jeff and I to, to swap pulpits that we would come and, and we'd be able to go and, and feed the other one's sheep. And Father God, um, I just thank you for that, and I ask you just to lead and guide through this time. Lead Pastor Jeff as he's up there now uh, sharing a message in, in, in Canton, and, and Lord, lead me as I share the message here, dear Lord, the message that you've impressed upon us to share. And so, Father God, I just thank you for that, and I ask you just to open each and every heart that's here right now, dear Lord, each and every heart to be able to receive the message that you have for them through this message, dear Lord. And even if each and every one receives a little different message, each of them has a message from you today. And so, Father God, I ask you just to prepare them hearts, and, and sometimes it takes a broken heart in order to be able to receive from you, because sometimes we've hardened our heart a little bit. And Father God, I just ask that you would break any hardened heart, and that you would just make fresh soil for the new seed to be planted. And so, Father God, I just ask for that today, that we would all be able to, to grow just a little bit more in the kingdom today, dear Lord. Lord, I ask that you have your hand on, on Sharon with the, with, uh, the epidural she's going in for and the heart uh, challenges that she's got going on, the heart issues she's got going on. And, Father God, I can tell that it's really troubling and weighing on her. And Father, I ask you to give her a little peace and a little comfort in this. I ask you to guide her through this and let her know that I'm right here. I've got you. And, and all you have to do, just lay your head upon my chest and hear my heart beat for what you need. And Father God, I ask you to help her to be able to do that. I also ask that you be with her care team and watch over her care team. I ask for your healing hand upon Sharon, and I ask for for guidance for the care team. And and even if the care team doesn't know who you are, even if they reject you right now, I pray that they would come to know you through this time, dear Lord, as as she's in with them, and uh, this coming week. And also, I ask for uh, your hand on on Ruth for her health. Uh, dear Lord, just her health in general, she's having some struggles, and Lord, uh, you know them. You know her struggles, you know her challenges even better than she knows them. And Father God, I ask you just to have your hand upon them. I ask you for healing upon her. I ask for your guidance uh, if she needs to go to someone. I ask for uh, your guidance for them, again, whether they know you or not. Even if they don't understand why it is I'm doing this this time because I've never done it this way before, even if that's the case, Father God, that's just even more, more of your authority coming through, more of your healing, more of your miraculous blessing coming through. And so, Father God, ask for your hand upon her uh, in this time. And, and, and through the, with the, bo uh, the families, I mean, dear Lord, of, of uh, Ruth and body, uh, the family of Sharon, Dear Lord, um, ask for that. I ask for you, you to be with Alyssa and, and her baby to soon enter this world. And Father God, I ask for your hand upon that whole process, dear Lord. Give her peace, give her comfort through this, which birthing has never been comfortable, Father God. Um, so I'm told. And so, Lord, I just ask you to, to give her comfort, though, with you, dear Lord, in this time. And that, that baby would come well and, and healthy, and mama would be healthy, and, and, and they'd be well cared for, dear Lord. And so, Lord, uh, a beautiful, uh, glorious entry into this world for a little baby. And so, Father God, um, also want to lift up uh, Brandy's uh, family that's, that's traveling. And Lord, just ask you to have your hand upon each one of them. Give them safe travels back home today um, as, they, as they return home. Ask you to lead and guide them, protect them, um, uh, uh, keep the critters off the, off the road and them on the road, dear Lord, if you would, on the way back. Keep the, the unsafe drivers out of the way that they would have a safe return home. And so Father God, just ask for your hand on them today as well. Lord, I ask for your hand on this message. This is the message you gave me to share today. And so, Father God, I just entrust this message to you. I entrust this body to you, dear Lord. I could not lead them. I could not teach them. I could not feed them if it wasn't by your authority, dear Lord. And so I just ask you, feed your sheep through me today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father God, we come to you with that prayer, that prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we get an amen? Amen. amen. Absolutely. What a beautiful, beautiful opportunity has been this morning already. I thank you for w warmly welcoming me uh, and, and my bride, Joe, to celebrate Yankton. What a beautiful chance to come to one of our sisters. And um, I'm going to try not to gurgle that in the mic. I guess I didn't think about that. So my name is Pastor Sheldon, as, as Jeff said. Um, I'm incredibly blessed to be able to be here. Um, and, and, and if I feel awkward or if I keep going, you know, just uh, the reason for that is because I wear a headset, and so I'm not used to it because I talk with my hands a lot. And so, you know, um, there's things you might not hear, and I'll try to repeat them if I do that. So, uh, but man, what a blessing it is for me to be here today. What a blessing it is today for my congregation up in Canton that God's entrusted to me to be able to hear from your pastor, Pastor Jeff, up there. And so uh, I've been friends with Jeff for a lot of years. Um, he and I stepped into ministry at the same time. Uh, you all planted a year after we planted up in Canton. Um, and uh, what a, a blessing he's been. What a help he's been. He's, he's been uh, a brother in arms, if you will, in the battle for salvation for the for the lost. Um, and what a blessing it's been to be able to walk with him these years. And uh, I didn't expect to get emotional, but uh, I love Jeff with all my heart, and I know God's using him in amazing ways, and I know the message that God gave him to share with my congregation today is going to make a huge impact for the kingdom within our congregation, and I'm just, I just got to admit, uh, I'm a little nervous because my congregation might not want me back after today, so, you know, uh, and, and you guys will probably be like, no, you don't get to stay here either, so, you know, I'm not going to have a home. My, my wife's going to be like, you got to get a new job, so, and so, uh, but uh, what a blessing, though, to be here today. Um, Jeff and I, he, he asked me, we, we talked about about a year ago, um, originally, and, and I just noticed there's some black X's on the floor. Am I supposed to stay within a certain range here? Okay, good. <laughs> uh, Oh, nice, thanks, great, lasers, and so, but uh, but anyway, so about a year or so ago, Jeff and I talked originally the first time about about um, uh, possibly swapping pulpits, and about a month ago when he talked to me, I'm like, let's do this thing, and, and when we did, when we, when, we, when we said, yeah, let's do it, um, then, then uh, we talked, and I said, so do, like, because we're in a series up there, and you guys do series down here too, right? And so we're in a series up there called What a Fish, and it's, a, it's about the story of Jonah, and we're walking through that, um, and, and Jonah's disobedience, but yet God gave him a second chance and all that sort of thing. And so anyway, today would have been the final week of that, um, and, and so we're like, so do you do the last week of what a, ta what a Fish, and I do whatever this week would have been for you guys, or do we just let God speak through us? Uh, whatever he wants to give us special for this week. And so that's what we agreed to do. And so today's message is, is this is God laid this on my heart um, uh, to share with you all. And, and with the campground, it was a blessing being over there this morning. Um, and and um, when, when we said no, let's, whatever God lays in our heart, immediately God told me, wow, worship. That's what he said. He said, wow, worship. And uh, I was like, Okay, that's interesting. So we're going to talk about worship today. And he said, let me finish that. Because um, wow is not just wow. Wow is who or what. Wow is who or what. Who or what do you worship? And who or what are we called to worship? And so um, I get to be a little emotional, and I also get to be a little wound up sometimes. And I get to, as you can tell, I pace. And uh, um, my nature is to try to be a people pleaser, but I found as a follower of Jesus Christ, you don't get to be a people pleaser. Uh, so I'm going to share this message, and uh, um, I just want you to understand I'm sharing it out of love, okay? Um, cause, and the reason I share that is because um, my congregation up there is not used to me not being in that pulpit. Um, um, uh, there's once or twice a year that I'm not in the pulpit up there. Otherwise, I'm there every week. Um, and so my congregation is used to Pastor Sheldon for 50 or 51 weeks a year. And uh, um, they're not, there's some of them are not real receptive to some other pastor that's not their pastor. 
And the reason they're not receptive is because of this. And I've started some conversations about this because re I recently had this conversation with someone. And, and the, the reality is what they're doing is they've put me up on a pedestal and for whatever reason they've tried to worship Sheldon instead of the God who Sheldon works for, instead of the God who Sheldon is able to speak and share messages for. And unfortunately, we sometimes do that, and sometimes we don't even realize we did that, right? But I know one thing. I preach against it all the time. I teach against it all the time. We could a lot of conversation. You can ask my bride. I am constantly reminding my congregation, do not, do not, do not ever put me on a pulpit or on a pedestal. I don't want to be on a pedestal. I don't belong on a pedestal. The only one we worship is God and God alone. And yet, even with my constant communicating that with my congregation, a couple weeks back I found out I got someone in my congregation who's trying to put me on a pedestal, and I'm like, knock it off, because I don't want to get knocked off. I've been knocked off. It's happened before, and I've been knocked off that pedestal, and I've, it's, things have gotten shattered. And so I had someone tell me, but you're my pastor. I don't need another pastor and let me share, you what, share with you what Paul says to that. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10 says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some of Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. So no one can say that you were baptized in my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. There was a struggle going on because Paul's not my pastor. Instead, Cephas is. Cephas isn't my pastor. Apollos is. Apollos isn't my pastor. Paul is. Let me personalize this with you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Sheldon. Another, I follow, I follow Jeff. Another, I follow Keith. Another, I follow Christ. If they're a pastor, if they're serving the Lord, if they're speaking his word, God sent us to do his work and it's never about worshiping us. It's all about worshiping Christ. When Jeff asked me about this, God said, wow, worship. Who or what are they worshiping? Guide them to know who or what they're supposed to worship. And so today we're going to look at that. We're going to look at who or what do we worship. Unfortunately, I mentioned to you a minute ago about the, the being elevated to a pedestal. Unfortunately, that's happened. I want you to understand that I am a sinner saved by Christ. Just like you, as a follower of Jesus Christ, are a sinner saved by Christ. We are all sinners saved by by Christ, do not elevate me. I am not a God. Jeff is not a God. I know some of you might be surprised by that. <laughs> I know Jeff, how humble he is, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, he's not letting you elevate him either. And so if you've been doing that, I ask you to stop. Because if we read Exodus 20, verse 2 and 3, or Deuteronomy 5, verse 6 and 7, they say the same thing. They both say, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other Sh Jeffs, no other Sheldons before me. I am your God, God says. 
And I know some of you recognize that, and you're like, wait a minute, that's Ten Commandments, that's Old Testament, we don't have to listen to that anymore. Jesus came, and we don't need to pay attention to the Old Testament. All we have to do is love Jesus Christ, accept that he's our Savior, that's all we got to do. We don't have to pay attention to those Mosaic laws anymore. Let me help you with that, because Jesus had something to say about that. Okay, Matthew 5, verse 17 through 9, and, and, and please, this is the way I talk, okay? So uh, if you're here and you're going, he's, he's, he's being mean to me, I'm not being mean to you, I'm just pointing out truth. Um, and and uh, um, sometimes I get, <laughs> some people say I'm snarky, but uh, it's just God's word, right? Um, what, Matthew, what Jesus says in Matthew 5, verse 17 through 19, um, do not think I have, that I have come to abolish the law, capital L, law, the Mosaic law. Don't, do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of, these, one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And I have those who say, it's the Old Testament, it don't count. But Jesus said, I didn't come to get rid of it. He said, I came to fulfill it. Here's the thing that we don't understand. This is the, this is the challenge. The reality is this, it's Jesus Christ, he's our Lord and Savior. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, if you've chosen to follow Jesus Christ, that, that means Jesus came not to start a religion, he came to start a relationship, and when he came to start that relationship, as we grow in that relationship with him, that means we no longer will want to steal. We no longer will, and if I point at you, I'm not pointing at you, okay? We no longer will, we no longer will want to cheat. We no longer will want to lie. We no longer will want to do the things against God's law because of why? Because of our loving relationship with Jesus Christ. If you love your wife, you won't be derogatory towards her. If you love your husband, you won't call him names, if you love your children, you will not beat them. But you also won't let them stay playing on the railroad tracks. Right? Because sometimes we think, oh, they well, we can't spank anyone. You can't do anything. The reality is if they're playing on the railroad tracks, the train's coming. We better do something to get them off the tracks. So we need to protect our children. Right? If we love them, we'll do that. If you love your pastor, you will not put him upon a pedestal so he can fall farther. Because he and I, we're going to fall. We're going to trip. We're going to mess up. And when you've lifted us up on a pedestal and tried to make us into a little G God, all you've done is allow us to be shattered even more by no desire of ours. Right? When we love Jesus, Jesus said this, right? It, it, uh, um, he said, for truly I tell you until heaven and earth disappear. Now, just a quick question. Um, is heaven and earth still here? Okay, it seems to me it hasn't disappeared, right? Like, I don't know how many normally are here, but it's like there are half of you all gone now today, and you were here yesterday, right? It hasn't happened yet, right? Jesus says, as long as, as, long as if, uh, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter nor the least stroke of a pen. So if we go changing the commands because, well, but that might hurt my feelings. But I have someone over here who I love them, and that, that particular thing, that must be wrong because God wrote that like 5,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago, and that must not, it doesn't, if he was here today, he would not have said that because he wouldn't want to hurt any feelings. But the truth is people do that. And if your God... If the God that you worship, if you're saying he didn't know 5,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, what was going to happen today, what was needed for today, if you're saying your God didn't know that, you and I are not worshiping the same God because my God knew. My God made sure every word went in here, every tittle and tat went in here, every period and exclamation point went in here, 
according to his plan. He ordained it. He made sure it was in there, and the stuff he didn't want in there, he made sure never got there. My God's in control. So if your God just didn't understand the world we're in, he didn't understand the division of today, if your God didn't know that was coming, let me introduce you to my Jesus. Because my God knew. It cannot be changed just because of our feelings, because of what we want. There were 613 Mosaic laws. Now, those laws came into effect. Those Ten Commandments came into effect. All that came into effect because God said, let it be. Okay? So, so we, need to, we need to remember the big problem with the world today is that we want what we want, and we try to make ourselves God. We try to make ourselves, we start worshiping self. And oftentimes, we don't even realize we started doing it. Oftentimes, we, don't, we, we just don't, we just don't, it's like, how'd that happen? But if, if your God didn't know what was going to come down to Pike in a couple of millennia, it's happened. The reality is most of us are worshiping something other than God. Most of us, we're, we're worshiping something other than God. If you don't believe me, let me help you to see who or what you worship. First question is this, what gets more of your time? What gets more of your time? Uh, Tis the season. Um, I know people who started on Friday, some actually starting on Thursday since the NFL's on now then too. Starting Thursday, we watch NFL or college. Friday, we watch college. Saturday, we watch college. Sunday, we watch NFL. And we'll spend hours and hours and hours and hours entirely the entire day, Saturday and Sunday, watching football. Friday evening, Thursday evening, watching football. But we won't open God's word for 20 minutes in a week. We won't talk to God. We won't spend any time with him, but we'll, we'll scream at that TV. We'll tell the coaches on there that can't hear us everything they're doing wrong and how you're a much better coach than they are. If that's you, football's your God. That's what you're worshiping. Now some, now I shared this at the campground, they, they did not stone me, so okay, so I'm just saying it should be okay here. Um, if your thing is that every weekend you need to be camping in the summer, and when you go camping in the summer, you're not like they are over in the campground. Some of them are over in the campground over here where they come and go to attend a church service, become part of the body, join together with the body on the weekend. Uh, instead, their camping is all summer long, and no, we're not going to do that church thing. God don't need me right now. Camping is your God. And thereby, you are your God. I know a lot of people who read and read and read and read and read, and they talk about all of the books they read, but they never crack open the Bible. God is not your God. Who are you worshiping? Whatever you're putting your time to, some people it's all party, party, party. I used to be there, I know, I understand. I used to also, the whole football thing, NFL-wise, I was there, okay? I get it. I'm speaking from me, okay? Some, it's all about the party. And, well, you know, if I sober up by Sunday morning, or in my case, it was just as long as I woke up because I would go to church drunk, or I would not have passed breathalyzers on many Sundays. Did my best to keep my eyes open because I certainly wasn't focused on what was going on there. I was, like, just fulfilling, you know, check the box. Okay, so I get it. I understand it. But some of us, the party is our God. Some of us, the parties are God. So what are you giving your time to? Whatever you give your time to is what you're worshiping, and what you worship is your God. So if you never open the Bible, you don't talk to God all week, here's the thing. How about, I'm assuming you two are a couple since you're holding hands in church service and all that, so um, I'm just going to assume some things, okay? So, um, but 
But so try not talking to her all week except for, for one hour on Sunday morning. See how that works. How's the marriage now? <laughs> try leading your children just one hour Sunday morning. That's it. Psst. Don't need to any of the rest of the week, six days, 23 hours. We don't need to teach them nothing. That's not a relationship. And it does not work. If Sunday morning is the only time you spend with God for one hour, if you're awake for it, if you're paying attention for it, that's not a relationship. God's not your God. So what gets more of your time? That's what you're worshiping. That's your God. Second one, why do you worship these things? Why do you worship these things? The reason we worship what we worship almost always is we're self-seeking. We're looking for something to make me have some self-worth. What, what can make me more valuable to those around me? What fills my cup? The problem is... We continue to pour into it and continue to pour into it and continue to pour into it, and it never gets full. The reason it never gets full, and it certainly doesn't overflow like it does with God, is because we're trying to fill ourselves up. We're trying to, we're worshiping things. There's a story of two guys who were talking about all the world's problems, and one day uh, they're having this conversation, they said, and, and one said to the other, he said, I don't understand how I can have all this stuff, beautiful ladies on my arm all the time, enough money to make rich people jealous, but I just feel so alone. But then there's you. You aren't broke, but you're not rich, yet you're happy. You have a real nice wife, but, but live a, a very mundane life with lots of stuff to do for the wife, for the house, and the kids. Your excitement is taking your family to church on Sundays and helping out with various community projects, and you seem to be very happy about that. How come? The answer from his friend was very simple and easy. He said, well, I start my day saying, Lord, thanks for the power an ability to live another day. What do you want me to do for you today? Then I get out of bed and get into God's Word. And I talk with God always, at work, at home, at the restaurant, everywhere I go. And He blesses me by giving me all that I need. We're worshiping things And who do you worship? The next one, who do you worship? Earlier, I shared with you Exodus 20 and said uh, that we're, we're to have no other gods before us. That means there, we're only to worship God, the big G God, the creator. So how do we do that? Deuteronomy 6, verse 5 says this. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. How do we worship? We worship God with absolutely everything that we have. If we want to worship God, we will give him our everything. I told him no. And uh, the short version is, I told him no a couple times in a row within a couple weeks before I realized he was calling me into ministry at 48 years old. There was no way. There was no way God was going to use me. And I kept telling him no. But it wasn't until I said, yes, Lord, I'm all in, that he removed the alcohol from me. He removed the desire for me to be a partier. And instead, the desire it gave me the desire to be a worshiper and a follower of Jesus Christ. But I had to be all in. I had to give him my everything. I couldn't any longer give him that hour on Sunday morning on the weeks we made it there, on the weeks I stayed awake for the hour. I could no longer give him that, and I no longer desire that. We have got to worship God with our all, with our everything, with our, all our heart, all our soul, and all of our strength. 
we should worship God with our words. We should worship God with song. Um, sorry if I hurt your ears a little bit ago, but I was about I was not holding it in, right? And so um, I'm not. I've, I've I've always said I'm a I'm a, a solo tenor singer, right? I, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna sing so low you can't hear me, and especially not at 10 or 12 miles away. Okay, and so. Um, uh, I have, because my dad, I grew up, my dad, he, was, he didn't always do things right, okay, so we'll just leave it at that, uh, but, but, but my dad made sure I understood that I sound like a dog growling when I sing, and so I would have to tell people, no, that wasn't coyotes last night, I was mowing the yard, it's okay, because I was singing on the lawnmower, right, um, but the reality is this, that I had to come to a place where when, when I came into ministry, when I started, uh, man, I was, because I was trying for a couple of years, trying to figure out what God wanted me to do, and all he ever said was, I want you to do more for my church. And, but, but it took me a while, and then I found out that, look, he wants me to sing, he wants me to give him everything. He gave me this voice. It sounds really good on a couple of songs when I'm in the shower and no one's around. Um, but, but he gave it to me, and he wants me to worship him with my all, with my everything. That means he wants me to worship him with this voice when I sing his praises. And there's some of y'all were singing. I don't know if all you all were or not. I couldn't hear. There was this dog growling in my ear. And so, um, but, but we're, to, we're to worship him with our all, with everything that we have. That's also our actions. Those actions at the stoplight when the guy didn't go soon enough. We're supposed to be worshiping God. That is not worshiping God. Need to use all five fingers when we wave. I'm just saying, okay? Um, those words that we use when the guy doesn't go, the instant the light turned green, go, you, and then your words. Okay, okay. And again, I have to confess, okay? Been there, done that, okay? Um, and that, that's still a challenge of mine. But we need to, we need to be worshiping God in all things, at all times, but that means we also need to be in conversation with God at all times about all things. If the only time you talk to your wife is that hour on Sunday morning, how can you have a loving relationship? You can't. You can't. Well, that's a great hour, honey. Man, I can't wait for the next six days and 23 hours on. <laughs> Man, you're holding on to me tight, honey. What are we telling God? You're only worth one hour of my day, one hour of my week. How can we have that relationship? I'm in prayer with God all the time. I drive school bus. There's days, the other day I had a dump truck back out onto the highway in front of me, and we just about ripped open the side of the bus with this box. And I can tell you, Lord help me, was the words coming out of my mouth when I'm trying to stop the bus and getting all the way over in the shoulder while I can, and when that dump truck finally stopped that far from my mirrors. You're going down the highway, that's kind of a scary little thing, and you got, at the time I had 13 little ones back here. I was thanking God. First, I was asking him to get us stopped and help us avoid the accident. Nobody get hurt at the very least. The second was, thank you, Lord, as I drove away for saving us and protecting us. I talk to God all the time. I talk to him when I'm driving my pickup. I talk to him when I'm riding the lawnmower. I talk to God all the time. We can talk to God. I don't know if some, some people don't know this, but guess what? We can talk to him when there's not a problem. It's amazing. We can talk to him when, like, when things went really good. Lord, that was the best day my wife and I have had in years. Thank you, Lord. Right? Lord, man, thank you, Lord. My child is healthy. Thank you, Lord. Not just when we need something. And so God wants us to speak to him. We need to remember it's not just one hour a week. The next thing is why should we worship only God? Why should we worship? Why is it wrong for me to worship my pastor? Why is it wrong for me to worship my job? Why is it wrong for me to worship my spouse? Because God says in Exodus 20, verse 5, he says, you shall not bow down to them. He's talking about the idols they had been, the Israelites had been creating uh, that were of objects of eagles and snakes and whatever, and, and people, right? He says, you shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God. 
but I love my wife, and I need to, I, she's got to know. I love her so much. I love her more than I do God. Therein is a problem. Because you're telling God he's second rate to your spouse. But I can't do that thing at the church because I love my wife. How about you love your wife because you continue to be obedient to what God's called you to do? Why do we worship God only? Because God's the only one worthy of our worship. He's the only one worthy of our worship. Jesus came to redeem us. He came to mediate for us. He came to be an a, a, um, a intermediary for intercessor for us to God so that we can connect with God anytime and all the time, right? Jesus came for that, but, but more than anything that Jesus died, nothing's more than our salvation, right? But what he did when he walked this earth was he built relationships, Everything, when you look at all that Jesus did, it was all about relationship. Whether it was, uh, whether it was uh, he established relationships when he was talking with his disciples. Um, he, 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 he established relationships that were going against the grain when he went to the house of Matthew and Nicodemus. You know those people. Jesus, he, when he was talking to the woman at the, the Samaritan woman at the well, he went against the grain of the world. But he was in relation, he was building relationship with all people for the glory of the kingdom. That all would be found. All would receive him and his salvation message. I am stoked. Stoked for you guys. I am stoked for Yankton. I am stoked for Yankton. Uh, celebrate Yankton. But I am stoked for the community. I'm stoked for the lost that are in this community. God has blessed you guys in so many ways. Over the years you've been, over the seven years, you guys have been bouncing, 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 right? Like a little big game of hopscotch trying to find a building or be in a building, right? It's been a challenge. But God opened the doors for this. God opened the doors for this, and he gave Jeff a, a vision. He gave him a vision to continue to be the light to the community around you. He gave him a vision. He gave him uh, 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 instruction and guidance when it came to the campground ministry. Because there's a bunch of people over there, all they were doing was camping on weekends. They didn't, they didn't get their time to be in relationship with God on the weekends. Here, he's opening up this here, and, and that over there is not done. That over there is not done. That, that, that isn't all that's going to be. I don't know what all God's doing over there, but I know in my spirit... There's more coming out of that we haven't even remotely seen yet. He hasn't revealed it to Jeff, and he hasn't revealed it to them over there or you here. This here, Janet's kids, oh, my land, oh, my land. Janet's kids, y'all are right on me. You had to bounce around a little. You had to find, you know, sometimes we have to tour or go on a journey before we come home, right? And we get that landing spot. I am stoked about all that God has laid on Jeff's heart for the vision of all of what's going to happen, not because of this building, but because of your obedience to God's calling. Because of Jeff's obedience in listening to the, to the word of God, his obedience in following the vision that God continues to give him, I am stoked about what's going to happen here in Canton because we don't even have a clue at this point. God lights my heart up every time, every time down here. I just, wow, it is so exciting because it's not about, as I tell my people in Canton, right? It's not about Celebrate Canton. Hey, folks, guess what? It's not about you. It's not about you. You guys are here. Jesus, your Lord and Savior? Jesus, your Lord and Savior? All right. There's another one out there that Jesus isn't their Lord and Savior. What a place here. Who knew there's a strip club down the way? Who knew there's a couple bars in the area? Who knew? Unfortunately, I've been to those sort of places. And I thank God that Pastor Keith and Suval has continued to follow the vision God had given him that I came to know Jesus Christ through Celebrate Sioux Falls. I thank God. But you guys, look, it's so exciting what God's doing down here. And I just want you to understand this. 
He's not going to do it if you're not willing to step into it. He has a plan that is much greater than what's here right now. His plan is much greater than what's here right now. What's here right now is the start, but you all are to be workers in the field. And I just want to encourage you with this. God's speaking to you, and some of you, he's speaking to you this morning. Some of you, he's been speaking to you for weeks. Some of you, maybe it's been years like it was with me. He's speaking to you. And when you choose, like you did to be here this morning, when you choose to do what God's asking you to do, what he's put in your heart, and maybe you don't understand what it is yet. Maybe you need to have a visit with Pastor Jeff, or maybe it's a matter of he hasn't revealed everything yet. But when you choose to do what God's called you to do, I am stoked about the light that's going to come out of Canton, or out of Yankton, I mean. I am stoked about that, out of celebrate here, but it's not celebrate, it's God doing what God does when his people will do what he asks of them and be obedient to his word. I am stoked about what God's going to do down here because this right now is a flicker. This is a candle lit in the dark. God wants to make a forest fire down here. It takes a lot of candles for that. It takes a lot of candles for that. So I want to encourage you as God's speaking to you and as you start worshiping him in places you didn't even realize you were worshiping yourself, in places where you didn't even realize you were worshiping others or other things, I want you to understand that if you will step into God's word, into what God's calling you to do and worship only him, this place is going to go up in flames. And the light of God will be seen for miles and miles and miles and maybe across the world out of Yankton because you are willing to have a relationship with God. You are willing to start worshiping only him. I want to encourage you with that. That's, that's, that's going to come in a lot of different fashions. Okay? Some of y'all have some abilities that others don't have. You got some talents that others don't have and that God wants to use those. Some of you, it's, it, it's, it's financially. You're, you're going to want to help out financially. Some of you, uh, um, it, it's, going to be, it's just going to be you being there, being that beautiful heart that you have for Christ, right? It, it's, it's going to look a ton of different ways. All of you have tools he wants to use. All of you, if you're willing to be the tool he's calling you to be, this place is going to go up in flames, and God's glory is going to shine all around. So I just want to encourage you with that. James 1, verse 17, and 2 Corinthians 9, verse uh, 10 and 11 both say this, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Those gifts are all around you. It started this morning when you woke up, and you realized you had a pulse, and you realized you had a breath. And from that moment on, God started putting opportunities in your life over and over and over and over again. God's still asking you, step into the opportunities. Because if you're like me, you still miss opportunities to serve the Lord and do what God's called you to do. So right now, he's speaking to you. I ask you to say, yes, Father, I'm in. I'm in. Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this word. I thank you for this... I thank you for this body. My goodness, Lord, they haven't even thrown anything. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the love that I can feel in this room, in this building, in this congregation. Father God, in this body, you have brought together the people that you desire in this time. And Father God, you've been speaking and you've been speaking and you've been speaking to them. And some you've been speaking for a long time. Some you just started speaking this morning. I believe that with all my heart, Lord, because you're telling me it. Lord, I don't know what it is that you need them to do. I don't know what it is you're inviting them to do. The opportunities that you're putting before them, Lord, I don't know what they are. But Father God, I know what you're showing me. Oh, man. Oh, man. Father God, I ask you to help each and every one of them to step into it, to stop resisting. Don't be afraid. 
and instead just be obedient and be in relationship and fall in love with you in a way that they've never fallen in love with you before. Father God, I just lay them all at the foot of your throne for you to do with as you will, dear Lord, and for them to be willing to be your children, being obedient to their father the way you desire for them to be. And Lord, may I be obedient to you in the way you desire for me to be. Lord, I just lift up each and every one up here. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for every opportunity you've put before each person here. Just pray these things in Jesus' loving name. Amen.